18 Orman Quay is the result of an exhaustive three to four year search by Dublin Civic Trust, scouring the city to find our next revolving fund building project. A lot of people know our former building, uh, Barnwell's Shoe Shop on Fort Castle Street, which we restored uh, about 15 years ago. But then after a long and uh, arduous search, this is the gem that we've uh, managed to acquire right in the historic heart of the city. I think this building at Ormond Quay, fronting onto the River Liffey, in many ways is witness to a thousand years of the city's history and evolution. And I think what's particularly key to the identity of Dublin is this jumble of fine-grained buildings that are jostling for attention in an in a uncontrolled and yet fairly disciplined way along the quays, interspersed with Gandon's major buildings, the Four Courts and then the Custom House. And we tend to look at those, the bookends, rather than looking at the grain in between. And this building represents that in its entirety. Dublin is a very strange city in how it presents itself. We have very plain buildings, plain brick barns as they're often called, and it's very easy to modify a, a building in the incorrect way so that buildings look really unassuming to the street. The brick is covered with render, you end up with a roller shutter or a plastic signage, and suddenly it becomes an innocuous, unremarkable thing on the street. And yet it's when you go behind these facades that you realise that so much hasn't changed in a lot of cases. And this building is just an example of that. We have a beautiful mid-19th century building at the front that has earlier layers in it, a much older 1760s house positioned to the back. But outside we have a, a slurry of grim institutional render that's covering both and makes it look like an industrial factory. And that's the thing that we want to do. We want to strip those layers off and bring it back, bring both buildings back to their former world. The majority of people it would probably scare the life out of. Not us, we do it on a, a regular basis. You don't really figure out the challenges in full until such time we start to open up the building. So we have an idea of what's going on, but predominantly when the buildings open up we find the, the real challenges. The condition of the cement render that was on the building, was this actually holding the building together or was it not? It was significantly heavy, so we were hugely concerned about that. The building revealed itself very early stages. There was a, a piece of signage on the gable. The minute we were able to remove that, we found some of the original wig pointing. We didn't have to make something up. We didn't have to guess. All we now had to do was match what was originally there. Wig pointing is known as Irish wigging. It's different from the point of an English tuck pointing. It's done in reverse. It is particularly skilled. There is a lot of it done around Dublin city. The bricks wouldn't have been laid as, as sharp as they, as they would be nowadays. And this was a way of showing accurately gauged brickwork. So it sharpened up the elevation and made it look very smart. With a building like this, the colour of our jointing, the colour of our pointing, the colour of our shop front, they're not our decisions, they're the decisions of the building. The building decides what colour the pointing is, what colour the brick is, what colour the shop front is. We're conserving the building as it was from the day it was built. The guys who built these buildings knew a lot more than we did a lot more because they built them with their own hands and they knew how buildings breathed and they knew how joinery worked. All part of a kind of a, a life cycle and a sort of a holistic approach towards the building that, that we, we're very keen to be involved in. But for us, it's also about the beauty of handmade stuff and about the beauty of repair. Geraldine and Graham asked us to come and look at the building as soon as they had bought the building and a lot of the staircase was missing and that was I suppose the, the biggest intervention that we had to work on. The upper, the very upper flight was still here and it, I suppose specifically and crucially for us the, the actual handrail and the spindles were here so we were able to then uh, replicate those and come up with um, the rest of the, of the stairs from the very bottom up. Um, so we were able to use this exact kind of shape for the handrail. It's a mahogany handrail. It's cut across the grain so that you get this beautiful flare in the mahogany. I'm even looking at this while I'm here and I can see the little rib that we've put into the bottom. You know, that could easily be left up. Why, why would you bother doing that? But 
you can read it. The Civic Trust were very keen to use wallpapers in uh, their uh, restoration of the interiors here, but unfortunately no fragments of the wallpapers that had been used in the house survived. Back then, in the 1840s as now, there would have been patterns that were designed for bedrooms, uh, patterns that were designed for entrance halls and stairways, and patterns designed for the more uh, formal rooms where people congregate, such as drawing rooms or dining rooms. The Civic Trust were quite keen to use one of the papers that had been produced just a few yards away on Bachelor's Walk in the factory of James Boswell. We were lucky to have a choice of around half a dozen of Boswell's patterns that he'd registered for copyright. It was a difficult choice, but I think uh, at the end of the day, uh, the choice to go for a more formal pattern, this damask pattern based on acanthus leaves printed in five colours, had the right degree of uh, richness and formality for this first floor room looking out onto the river, which I, uh, I think it's pretty safe to say would have been the room where the family or guests gathered. I think what's so important about what the Civic Trust have done here in Ormond Quay in bringing together all these crafts and skills, the wallpaper, the joinery, is, 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 is to show how these old buildings can be lived in, in a way that brings out their very best qualities, rather than make them all homogenized contemporary interiors with uh, just the facade looking out on the on the outside world to, to do more than that to go back and actually find out how people lived in these houses then uh, the comfort the warmth the um, the style that they offered and and above all uh, lovely to live with our aim in Dublin Civic Trust is to lead by example in the conservation of the historic buildings of Dublin. It's vital that traditional skills, crafts and trades are engaged in the conservation and restorations of buildings of this kind because if the demand is not there for those services, they will die. And in this project in 18 Ormond Quay over the past two years, we've managed to piece back together uh, this wonderful example of a Dublin merchant house over shop. And in the process, we've managed to sustain traditional skills in a way, I think, that, that's really brought back the spirit uh, of the age in which this building was built when it was finished in 1843.